Newsmaker Sunday with Fox 10's John Hook. Thanks for joining us on Newsmaker Sunday. We are going to talk pot today because uh, you may very well in November of 2016 be voting on legalizing recreational marijuana in Arizona. It's the campaign to regulate marijuana like alcohol. Launched its petition drive in May. They need 150,000 valid signatures of registered Arizona voters to qualify for the November 2016 ballot. And joining us today is J.P. Holyoke. He's a chair of that campaign to regulate marijuana like alcohol. Thanks for having me, John. It's great to see you. It's a long title, but it, it explains pretty much exactly in the title what's going on. It right? does, absolutely. You know, a big, a big part of this is, uh, I'm just gonna use myself as an example here. So tonight when I go home, I'm gonna have dinner with my wife and I'm probably gonna have a glass of wine. Now, I know that that glass of wine is objectively more risky and more dangerous than marijuana is. But certainly no one's gonna come try to arrest me for having that glass of wine mm -hmm. and charge me with felony possession charges for that. You run uh, a dispensary, right? I do, yeah. You got into this because of your daughter. That's right. Who has pretty serious illness and yeah. this has helped her in what way? Well, my daughter has what's called a Cardi syndrome. It's a rare and unusual syndrome and, and frankly the prognosis on it is, is awfully bleak. Um, her name is Reese. She's about six and a half years old now. And, and prior to marijuana, Reese was having between 25 and 35 seizures a day. Each of them lasting was, was lasting between eight and 12 minutes. She wasn't developing. She was, she really didn't have much quality of life. And we were on the pharmaceutical merry-go-round. We tried drug after drug. None of them worked well. All of them had horrible side effects. So I was, a, I was simply a desperate parent. Now keep in mind, that I was an anti-marijuana person at this point in time. You're a pretty hardcore Republican, right? I am an unapologetic conservative re Republican that believes in individual responsibility and individual freedoms. That is a very interesting backdrop. Who, do you recall who the first person was who said marijuana might help your daughter's seizures? I don't. I, uh, I think I read about it. And, and you just were looking online anywhere. I was simply a desperate parent that's, that's reading anything and everything that sure. I can, trying to find something that will help my daughter. And, and any time when you're a parent in this situation and you see the word seizures, your ears pe perk up and you're going to read everything that you can about that. It's an interesting uh, backdrop for the discussion today. Um, tell me about what this would do, this initiative. What would it do? Sure. What this initiative, uh, initiative does is it, is it allows for adults over the age of 21 to purchase and possess a limited amount of marijuana. That Can they, you tell me why? Let me stop you. Why 21? Why not 18? That, that's a good question, but if it were up to me, I probably would have put the, put the age at 25. 25? That would have been my preference. And this, I'm just guessing here, this gets back into the development of the young brain, that any kind of substances early on, in development of the frontal cortex especially, sure. where decision making, reasoning, uh, judgment, sure. can be become problematic with, with use of any kind of substances like this. Absolutely, and in particular like alcohol, certainly has a, a much greater effect on those things. Nobody that, that's part of this campaign, that's a marijuana advocate, is going to say that it's okay for teenagers to use marijuana. Period, flat out, that's not okay. But the real question here is, how do we prevent that? You know, marijuana prohibition today has been an abject failure. Any teenager out there that wants marijuana has easily and readily accessible access to that marijuana. So prohibition's been a failure. What we're saying is, let's take this away from these criminal drug dealers and instead put it into a taxed and regulated business that has an incentive to keep it away from children rather than the incentive to sell to them. Let me run you some numbers here. This is pretty shocking. I think the best, and it may not be a, an apples to apples, but the, the best comparison we've got in the, in the Rocky Mountain West is Colorado. Colorado brought in 76 million in tax revenues from sale of marijuana in 2014. They are expecting now, they are on pace to make 125 million Mm -hmm. on marijuana. What do you think the numbers might be if this initiative were to pass in Arizona? There's a lot of numbers that are being thrown out there and certainly I've thrown my number out there. I put out a number and said I think we're going to be able to provide to the education system here about 40 million dollars a year. Now certainly on the prohibitionist side they ridiculed that number. They, they flat out said that I was being dishonest. 
Well, then the Independent Grand Canyon Institute came out with their own study, and they said that my number was far too conservative, and they put the number much higher than that. And what did, where did they put it? North of $50 million. $50 million for education. So if this were to pass, you tax the cannabis. It's used for recreational use. That's right. You tax it um, at a rate of what? It's a 15% surcharge tax right. on top of the ordinary city, state, and county sales taxes. Right. In Colorado, their taxes, total taxes on pot are 28%. If you add up everything, about a third of it, roughly, is going to taxes. Yeah. So the money would go to education, and That's where correct. else? So 80% of the money goes to education, 20% of it goes to public health care. Okay. And this would be for 21 years or older. Now, about the amount of marijuana mm -hmm. that could be used. As I read it, people would be permitted to grow six plants in their homes. Yeah. Um, and I think, what is it? Uh, is it a dozen, a dozen plants for a family? Well, no, it's, it's six plants per individual with no more than two of those, two individuals growing at a single location. Okay. So you couldn't have you know, a, a large scale cultivation And you could buy that. at a time how much? It was one an ounce. ounce. One ounce, and that yeah. would be how often? Uh, well, any purchase, any purchase up to one ounce. So you're not limited in, in a time span at all no. on how much you can purchase at any. That's correct. How do you and how has it worked in Colorado with black market sales once you legalize recreational use? What happens? Sure. There are some people out there that, that are making an argument saying, hey, this is going to eliminate the black market. Well, that's just not true. The black market exists on just about any substance you can imagine right now. There's still a black market for alcohol. Yeah. In fact, well, there is in the South. There's moonshine. Absolutely. So the idea that you're going to completely eliminate the black market just doesn't make sense. I mean, there's a black market for cigarettes also. Right. So I'm not willing to say that it's going to eliminate the black market, but it's certainly going to drastically reduce that black market. Because that adult that's buying marijuana today, if he has the option, he can say, well, I can go into this store that's a nice store that provides a variety and a, provides customer service where the products are tested, we know what the potency is, or I can meet a dude in the Circle K parking lot. Well, they're going to go to the store and they're yeah. going to buy a known quantity that's been tested and regulated. The only difference with that is, is um, I guess if you go into a regulated store, you're, you're known. If you want to keep your marijuana use on the D-Lo, you might want to continue to buy from the guy underground. No. No? No, not at all. So an adult walks into a tax and regulated adult use mar medical or marijuana store. Not medical marijuana. Not this medical. is recreational. This is recreational. Okay. Walks into that store. He simply has to provide proof of age. So okay. just like buying, buying beer. So it won't be like medical marijuana where you are known. Correct. To be a user. You That's would carry a card and people would know that you. Yeah. How much... Do you believe, uh, JP, medical marijuana has led to where we are right now with the discussion about recreational marijuana? I mean, at the time, everybody was very, very clever about saying this is only for medical use. But we know this is not true because people are buying cards. They're getting cards for vagary uh, uh, medical issues, vague medical issues, back pain, I've got headaches, whatever it is, and they can get a card. Sure. They're not sick. They, they don't have an illness. Most of them don't. There's no question about it. There are some individuals that are doing that. But the rate of that incidence is far lower than anybody would like to imagine. And, and let me give you the example. That adult that's willing to game the system, he already has easy, readily available access to marijuana anyway. He can go buy it on the street. Maybe it's, not as good as what they're selling in the dispensary, though. They got some pretty good stuff out there. Really? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, this is, one of the, this is one of the issues. The marijuana now being sold is not anything that we grew up with. This stuff is potent. Not necessarily. I mean, I, I've heard that argument. But that argument is saying, I'm going to use like a, a beer and wine example here. Beer, on average, is about a 5% potency of, of alcohol. Wine is approaching 20 are you telling me that that glass of wine is four times more dangerous than that glass of beer? I mean, it's kind of a ludicrous argument. And it frankly leads us to the idea that we're better off regulating it so th those things are labeled rather than an unknown potency. Have you extrapolated what this could mean to the penal system if you were to do this? Absolutely. It would be do far we know how much money could be saved? I don't know that number for... I don't know. But I do know that I can look at the 2012 Arizona Crime Report, 
And in 2012, Arizona arrested about 15,000 individuals for simple possession of marijuana. This wasn't growing, this wasn't selling, this was... That would be over how much, how many ounces to get popped for that? Any amount. Any amount you can Any get. amount whatsoever. So 15,000 individuals in 2012 were arrested for simple possession of marijuana. I thought we had a certain amount you had to be carrying to be busted for possession. No. It had to be over a certain nope. amount. Not at all. No. Any amount whatsoever. And the charge in Arizona is a felony charge. This idea of a gateway. It's been debunked a hundred times over. <laughs> I mean, I'm, uh, I'm glad to have the discussion well, with you. Well, I do wonder because, I mean, uh, uh, you, you talk to addiction counselors and many of them will tell you. I haven't met a kid who's using who didn't start with marijuana. Mm -hmm. I mean, they'll tell you that. Sure. They would also tell you the same thing about uh, alcohol or tobacco, or you could carry it all the way back to high sugary drinks and mother's <laughs> milk if you want to. So, You're saying I mean, it doesn't matter. So how far back do you want to go on that? But here is some credibility to the gateway theory because oftentimes people will seek out marijuana and when you have an illegal black market you have this drug dealer who says well I've got marijuana here that you came looking for and I've also got something over here would you like some of that so by keeping marijuana illegal you are taking something that that many people use and you are now introducing them to the black market of drugs where other drugs are then being offered. It's an interesting and take on it. If there is a gateway, that's it. Let me uh, run tape number three. This is, um, these are some of your opponents talking about this and I wanna get your reaction. And we start, uh, I think Superintendent Diane Douglas is part of this, um, saying that she doesn't want the money for education. Uh, she won't call it blood money, but she has a term for it. Take a look, this is uh, the people who don't like this idea of legalization for recreational use. Arizona's State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Diane Douglas, spent the morning reading a fairy tale to kindergartners in the East Valley, but says in reality, she sees danger in the prospect of legalizing recreational marijuana and using a tax to fund Arizona's struggling school system. To a certain extent, it's a moral issue, but again, also it is that issue of we're telling our children one thing, not to, to stay away from drugs, and yet we're going to pay your teachers and, and support your schools with money from the sale of these drugs. In a statement, Douglas said, quote, I believe that using drug money to educate our school children is evil and hypocritical, and I don't want any part of it. While Arizona is in desperate need of more K-12 education funding, a more responsible solution must be identified. Education is already, as we just discussed, funded by those two other veins, the lottery and tobacco tax, and people have said that that's evil money. Lisa Olson, money. a teacher at a public charter school in Tempe, says education in Arizona is terribly underfunded and this tax could make a difference. I have taught in buildings where ceilings leak, where the air conditioning unit is 25 years old and we are nursing the thing to keep it alive. We have cut corners everywhere that we can and we're fairly desperate. J.P. Holyoke is a chair of the campaign to regulate marijuana like alcohol. You just heard the, some of the arguments against. Anything you want to respond to there? Sure, well, does it make any difference where the money comes from that goes to education? But here's more to the fact, you know, we put out the estimate of $40 million to education. Well, that's $40 million that's going into education that's not going to criminal drug dealers and cartels. This is not a question of whether or not marijuana is going to be sold. The only question is whether or is who is going to sell it are we and where get a, are those proceeds going to yeah, go? Are we going to get a piece of the action? Exactly. Uh, one of the things is, that's interesting in this is we look at the Colorado experience and I wanted to run a couple of things by you. These are, we're going to take a break in a moment. One of the things that, uh, and these were findings that I was uh, reading some of the studies that have come out of Colorado. I think you're going to quarrel with this, but I want to throw them out at you. I've got to play a little bit of devil's advocate because you're on the pro side. Colorado, this, this recent study found that there was a jump in the number of teens and adults who reported trying pot. Colorado now has 369 licensed marijuana retail stores, 98 licensed producers of edible marijuana products. Um, companies often advertise edibles and other products with displays that appear to be ge geared toward children. Do you find this not true? It's not true at all. In fact, Governor Hickenlooper, Colorado's governor, who was a strong opponent against their Amendment 64, which was their legalization right. amendment, he recently came out and said, 
People that weren't smoking marijuana before are still not smoking marijuana, and people that were smoking marijuana are still smoking marijuana. The sky has not fallen. Is there a way to do it better than Colorado it, with what we can do here in Arizona? And what sure, would that be? Sure, I think that, that Colorado is probably a much more liberal you know, adult use program than Arizona is. There, there's certainly no limit to the number of stores and, and certain parts of, of Denver. You'll see marijuana stores literally next door to mm -hmm. each other. Arizona is far more restrictive in that we're going to have a far more limited number of stores. Why would that matter and who cares whether it's, I mean, you take liquor stores, they're all over the place. Why, why, why does that matter? Well, I think that there's a perception issue that matters there. You know, I'm a parent. I have certainly my special needs daughter, but I also have two other younger children, ages five and three. And I don't necessarily want marijuana to be thrown in their faces any more than I want marijuana thrown into my face. If you look at the medical marijuana program that we have today, it's there, it's not causing problems. People generally don't even notice it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's the way that adult use marijuana should be also. Adults should have access to it, they should be able to purchase it on a tax and regulated basis, but it doesn't need to be thrown in people's faces. So by limiting the number of stores and making it more restrictive, we're accomplishing that. I'm curious, just as two fathers sitting here, how do you explain to your kids what you do for a living since you run a dispensary? That's sure. your business. It is. I think parents need to have honest conversations with their children. You know, I grew up in a very conservative household. My parents had those, what they thought were honest conversations <laughs> with me at the time also. And, and So you'd have no trouble telling them? No, none whatsoever. This is what dad does. But they need to know what it is and they need to know why. Now I'm currently in the medical marijuana business. Right. And, and my kids, they see my daughter receive her medicine just like they see her receive other medicines. They don't know it being any different. Right, right. It, it's, it's, it's no different. And, and, frankly, and all medicines are extracted from something. Exactly. This just happens to be from marijuana. Exactly. But this is no different than the conversation that people, that parents need to have with their children regarding alcohol. And frankly, as a parent, knowing what I know about alcohol and knowing what I know about marijuana, I would much rather my child I prefer he's an adult, got into a bag of marijuana, then got into a bottle of alcohol. Before we take a break, why? Because it's objectively safer, quite simply. It's objectively safer. Marijuana is objectively safer than alcohol in every single regard. We're back in a minute with J.P. Holyoke. He's the chair of the campaign to regulate marijuana like alcohol. You may be voting on it if they get the signatures by November of 2016, roughly a year from right now. Back in a moment on Newsmaker Sunday. Welcome back to Newsmaker Sunday. Um, by this time next year, you may be preparing to vote on something called the Campaign to Regulate Marijuana Like Alcohol. Voting on legalizing recreational use of marijuana in this state and taxing it. And the money, some of it, going to education. A big portion of it going to education. J.P. Holyoke is the chair of that campaign to regulate marijuana like alcohol. Um, you guys need 230,000 signatures, roughly? We need to turn in about 150,000 valid signatures, but there's a validation process. Sometimes people will sign the petition, but they're not registered to vote. So, so your goal is 230 to make sure you reach the bar. Exactly. And we're and sitting about 80,000 today. That's right. You announced uh, recently that you were at 75,000. You're, yeah. you're rolling. We're running at a clip at about 5,000 a week. Collecting what, the signatures is not our biggest challenge. What are challenge. people saying out there when you've when you're out there talking to them about this? I think people as a general rule are recognizing that prohibition has been a failure of a policy and they'd like to see something different. Does law enforcement, I, I would sense they would obviously oppose this because there's RICO money involved, there are recovery areas where law enforcement makes money on the, on the drug war. Absolutely. So you're getting blowback from law enforcement. Well, so far law enforcement really hasn't been giving us a lot of blowback. But, but the reality is we would like to see law enforcement actually focusing on, on other types of crimes rather than an individual that happened to smoke a little bit of marijuana. Do, do you believe that this could really harm the cartels? It certainly puts a dent into them. Now they engage in all kinds of different activities and, and certainly they traffic in lots of different drugs. So is this going to put cartels out of business? No, but it simply takes away their most significant you know, stream of revenue. This, this 50 million that you think 
is possible recovery from well, the Well, the 50 million was the independent Goldwater, or right. the Grand Canyon Institute's number. My number you was thought about it was 40. 40. Yeah. Um, 50 million, just to give people perspective, uh, K through 12 education in Arizona spends about 9 billion to educate about a million kids. So it's not a huge portion. No, no, it's not. But you so. extrapolated what it might mean per classroom. Well, at my number at $40 million, a million kids, it's about $40 per head. Let's say there's 30 kids to a classroom. That's about $1,200 per classroom in every classroom across the state of Arizona every single year. The states that have legalized it so far, Washington, Colorado, Oregon, Alaska. Mm -hmm. If people were to research this, which of those states most mirrors what we're trying to do here? Well, Colorado and Washington have implemented their programs. Alaska and Oregon are underway. They're not under, they haven't implemented yet. So the closest comparison would be Colorado. But I would dare argue that Colorado's is, well, I should say Arizona's is more restrictive in a higher, it's more highly regulated than what Colorado's put forth. I think we're learning from, from what Colorado's done right and what they haven't done what right. What haven't they done right? I think in Colorado, they're, part of their learning process comes down to the, the testing, you know, making sure that things are properly identified and they're learning that. They're, they're learning about the the dosages, the appropriate amount mm -hmm. of marijuana that should be in some of what their edible products. What about edibles? There's been a lot of discussion about edibles yeah. and, and young kids getting their hands on that stuff. Sure. Well, I think that comes down to you know, responsible parenting. Uh, nobody out there thinks it's okay for children to use marijuana, period. So should this stuff be disguised uh, instead of like candy, really shown what it is so that people don't mistakenly... I'm all for full disclosure on labeling. And I think there should be warnings, and there will be warnings that are put on all packages that, I, that clearly identify this as something that's containing marijuana. We've got to take a quick break. Uh, J.P. Holyoke is the chair of the campaign to regulate marijuana like alcohol. You may be seeing it a year from now in Arizona. We're back in a minute on Newsmaker Sunday. Newsmaker Sunday, we're talking about the effort to legalize recreational marijuana in Arizona. And it could be coming to a ballot near you a year from now. J.P. Holyoke is the chairman of the campaign to regulate marijuana like alcohol. I want to play some sound from a gathering of teachers because what percentage of proceeds would go to education? 80 percent. 80 percent of that surtax goes to education. This is what at least one teacher said about this whole effort. We need every dollar we can get for education to help keep our class sizes small, to help maintain our buildings, keep our buses safe to drive, our air conditioning units working, and to keep our textbooks supplied. Tying education to this is a, politically, just looking at it politically, sure. it's a brilliant move. It's the, it's the need in this state that everyone identifies as number one. We've got to get the education system fixed. Yeah. And education is something you've been immersed in outside of the marijuana business here. It's involved. always been something important to me. You know, as, as a parent of three, three children, I want them to have the best possible education that they can have. And, and sometimes that takes money. Where are we going to get it? And, and so far, our state legislature doesn't seem inclined to, to properly fund education. What's the best argument you can make for, first of all, if people want to sign a petition, but second of all, just passage of this? Sure. This is really simple in my book. I'm okay with people not wanting to be around marijuana, not wanting to use marijuana, and even thinking that it's bad. But the question is not yes marijuana or no marijuana, because marijuana already exists, it's out there, it's easily and readily available to anybody and everybody that wants it. The choice that we really have, are we going to pass this initiative that allows for the taxation and regulation of marijuana, that th those dollars are then funded or provide funding for our education and health care, or are we going to keep marijuana illegal for the enrichment of criminal drug cartels? Those are really something? the only options. Yeah, good to see you. Best of luck to Thank you, you John. We will have you back on for sure before we get down to the nitty gritty here. We'll see you next week on Newsmaker Sunday. Thanks for being with us.